Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Courtside with Christy and Gabe right here on the Her Hoop Stats Podcast Network. I am Christy Winter Scott, joined as always by my guy, Gabe Ibrahim, just back from Miami, yes. where I heard it was super humid and you were in your hair like Gino Ariema. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, okay. I was I was in my hair like Gino or Katie Meyer uh, okay. or any coach facing just like when your team can't hit a shot or can't get out to uh, a, a, a three point shooter. That's how it felt because the entire time, like I forgot. Don't get me started. <laughs> yeah, Chris, Chris, go ahead. Chris, we, we can get into that too. But I, I just I forgot like it was my sister's wedding and part of it was oh. outside. And, you know, you get used to being in D.C. and it's been cold and my hair looks great in the cold. Uh, and then like I get there and just poof, like you know, oh, everything's yeah. just out of control. I had an awesome time. I made up for my hair okay. via the dancing. And then <laughs> once I sweated enough, like everything was matted down. So it was fine. It was usually yeah. my goal at a wedding. If I'm at your right. wedding, I'm going to dance so much that I sweat through my shirt. That's a good so, deal. That's that's how it is. But I did that's forget fun. how humid it was <laughs> in Miami. But you should never forget to follow us at Her Hoop Stats on Twitter. Our Twitter name just popped up. Make sure you subscribe to us here on YouTube or if you're listening on the podcast to wherever you get your podcasts because uh, it's almost March, Christy. It's almost it's on. March. It's it is almost. up and it's stuck up. or whatever that song is. Is that a bad song? Anyway, it's up and stuck. <laughs> I don't know. I'm around too many teenagers. It's, you know, to my but, team and my own kids. It's like, whatever. But it is, <laughs> it is snuck up. That hasn't snuck up because we've been talking about it for so long, but it does always feel like March comes and there's a different, it's a different season, yeah. different time. You know, we talked a lot last year about your experience in March and just like, I don't know, it's starting yeah. to feel different, right? It is. It is. I mean, that's, that's what you want though. You mm-hmm. know, it's, it's always, you know, if you ever played in March, it's always the time to, you know, reminisce. And I mean, maybe it's just me. I don't know. I think other <laughs> I people do it so. too, but yeah. I don't know. When you turn that calendar to March, Gabe, it, it's a different vibe altogether. You understand what these youngsters mm-hmm. are getting themselves into when they are fighting for seating in the NCAA tournament. And then once they're in there, it's six games. You yep. know, and and now it may be seven if you're one of the two extra teams or four <laughs> extra teams. But, um, you know, it's uh, it's quite something. But when you think about how you got there, mm-hmm. that's what pushes you through all the summer workouts, all the preseason sprinting on the track for your life uh, for that line. Or maybe that was just me, too. <laughs> um, down the last straightaway, I mean, you didn't feel your legs turning over and it's just like, just go. Right. Um, all of that weight room stuff, uh, all the extra reps that you did outside of practice. Okay. But now here's your chance Mm -hmm. and it's, it's time to see who, who's who, and this is where your legacies are written, right? In the postseason, we've seen so many great stories and, and journeys of players and coaches throughout the years in, in March and, and what that truly means. And to, extend your season and continue on and eventually obviously crown a champion man there's nothing like that and there's also nothing like falling short of that so (laughs) for the final four and you know so every year it's you know it's a little bittersweet but you know it's always about the journey and and what you become going through that kind of challenge well and the conference tournaments too are are honestly for a lot of these teams just as important because you face these people twice a year and you're looking at them as your barometer all season long. And I, I'm right. just really excited for the for even next week before we even get to the NCAA tournament. Next week, when those conference tournaments starts, I'm going to be in Greensboro for the ACC. You'll be in Chicago. It's in Chicago, right? They, uh, they Indianapolis, show? Indiana. Oh, okay. Yeah, Indy. Just a little less exciting, but I hear I hear Indiana's cool. Close. <laughs> I, hear, I, cool. I, I think Indianapolis <laughs> is cool. Um, but regardless, I, I think those conference tournaments are going to be really, really fun, especially because we have mm-hmm. such great, well-balanced conference as we've talked about all year. Um, yeah. But I think before then, we got to we got to look back, right? We got to look back on the regular mm-hmm. season that was, or it will end. <laughs> when does the regular season end? Like on Sunday? Sunday. Oh, we yeah, have one game because- on Monday. 
We have one game on. Monday. I was going to say most conference tournaments begin on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. The Big South Championship is in the Bojangles Coliseum. How come no one told me this? Wow. I love Bojangles. Have you have you been to Bojangles? Yeah. I have. I have. And the Bowberry Biscuits, highly recommend. It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal highly stuff. I will, I will be hitting up Bojangles next week in Greensboro. Sorry, that was an aside to getting to what we're going to do today, which is hand out some awards. And yeah. I think I think we're going to start with... This isn't necessarily an award, but I want to, I think you brought this up and I got in, I got into it when you brought up that we should rank the top three conferences this season. And so I got a little bit more scientific with it, a little bit, just a little bit of math, just, just some tiny bit of math, but I want to hear your take. I have zero math when it comes (laughs) to mine. Mine is a, I I go by a feel, you know what I mean? I go by momentum. I go by, you know, maybe factoring in injuries, illnesses, mm-hmm. um, and whether players are 100% back from these For injuries sure. and illnesses and so forth. So there's a lot this year in that regard. But, you know, I haven't like mathematically calculated anything. <laughs> I'm just going by my eyeballs and my heart and soul. That's what yes. I usually I live by. So, yeah. So that's my, that's what I'm going to do. So. You can start off though, since you're um, scientifically sound with yours. <laughs> no, I kind of want to hear yours first. You hear mine? Okay. I can go for I can go first, it, Christy. You know, it's it's courtside with Christy and Gabe, not courtside with Gabe and Christy. <laughs> I'm 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 the I'm the role player. Oh my gosh! Well, I'm a role player too. You didn't know that. See, nobody told you. Okay, so listen. All right, I'll go first. But I'll, how about we alternate? Because sure, I'm a team sure, player. Sure. Boom, 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 boom. All right, here we go. All right, so for me, the overall number one ranked conference, Mm -hmm. and this is in no way biased of me to say, because I've seen articles saying as much, okay, um, Mm -hmm. recently on ESPN and, and so forth and so on. I'm going with the Big Ten because so much hinges upon how not only the end of the regular season for Big Ten play ends for national rankings and future seedings in the mm-hmm. NCAA tournament, but the conference tournament, I think that is the pendulum that is going to make the biggest difference in the entire landscape of the women's basketball tournament this March. And even if I do not work for them, I would say the same thing because like I said, other people have noticed as much. Other people understand that the five teams ranked in the top 25 and the six in the top 30 in the big 10 are all basically playing one another in the last week of of Mm -hmm. conference play of regular season conference play. And then the tournament's going to start and that's going to be bananas. It's going to be so good. So that's my first one. I don't know if you mathematically came to the same conclusion. No, I did <laughs> not. And not Darn only it. that, the Big Ten is not in my top three conferences, period. What in Full the stop. what? Full stop. I knew this is where we were gonna, I knew this was gonna where we we're gonna disagree. Full stop. They're not in my top three conferences. As much as we talk about them, and as much as I love the teams in this okay. conference, I did kind of factor those injuries into play because right. it does matter heading into the tournament who's healthy and who's not healthy. So if we're thinking about conferences in terms of their ability to win a national championship to produce a lot of Sweet 16 teams, I I don't think, uh, you know, the Big Ten, I can confidently say that the Big Ten is going to have the most Sweet 16 teams or whatever barometer you want to use. Like, I I can't confidently say that now because of the injury situations with, (laughs) I mean, Maryland, Michigan got healthy, Iowa got healthy, kind of. Indiana got healthy a little bit. Those players are, are, are getting there. And, and I think, you know, Hey, we'll see what happens in conference tournament time. But right. right now I can't put my full confidence in them as a top three conference, just because the other conferences have been really good. And I think just like you look at it, right. I'm listening. So we got Maryland, Michigan, Iowa, Indiana. Those teams are awesome. Those are four teams that, you know, if you told me they got to the final four, I wouldn't be surprised. I think Nebraska yeah. is an excellent team. I think Ohio State's an excellent team. I think Michigan mm-hmm. State's a really good team. I think Northwestern's good too. So that's basically like the conference, the the, the tournament realm. Like that that okay. realm is good. I just don't think the Nebraska through Northwestern grouping 
is as good as the middle of the conference as you know these other conferences. I think the ACC has a, has a stronger middle. Um, the Big Twelve, while it's smaller, well, well, I'll get into little, the Big Twelve a little bit more. But just like I just think that the middle of this conference is not quite as good as uh, certainly my top conference, which is the SEC. Um, and I did so. Here's my math. This is what I did. Okay. Simple math, right? I took uh, the her hoop stats rating of every team. And the simple RPI of every team, which is measured on herhoopsets.com, which you subscribe to you for $20 a year, $20 and a that's... year, folks. Um, but so I took the, I took the HHS rating. I took the simple RPI and I just and... averaged them out for each conference. And then I figured out, you know, who's the top conference via that SEC to, to the surprise of no one really <laughs> is at the top uh, because they have just a, an excellent grouping of teams. They have South Carolina, who's really, raising that level they have the highest hss rating in the country the 44.8 no one else in this conference is above 25 but i think of what you look at you know i know tennessee's struggling recently but tennessee certainly has had a great year i think lsu's a really really good team i think arkansas has got it together here late georgia a little bit falling off but I like them. And then you look at the bottom of this conference and we have Florida as the 11th team, uh, the, sorry, the 10th team here in terms of HHS rating and Florida is a ranked team. They're really good. I think Missouri is too. So you look at this conference top to bottom and it's obviously pushed up greatly by South Carolina, but I think the rest of the conference fills in nicely, despite perhaps not having, you know, a, a, the entire list of championship contenders. I think they have a really solid grouping from top to bottom. I hear what you're saying, mm -hmm. but I'm not buying what you're selling okay. in terms of Tennessee. And I am saying that with the utmost respect to Kelly Harper, mm -hmm. but they have major injuries right now. I Horston's mean, Green out. is out, Horston's out with that elbow fracture. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was there everything, right? Just under 17 points across the board on the glass, assists, steals everything so mm -hmm. if we're factoring in injuries i mean what's that going to look like and when she comes back they're saying you know she's out for several weeks now here yeah. so clearly going to miss the sec tournament right mm -hmm. and clearly possibly who knows will not be a hundred percent if they extend and go into uh, a deep run in the ncaa tournament so I hear what you're saying though. And yes, you know, with Missouri being the only team knocking off South Carolina this year, intriguing to say the least Georgia. Yes. They've fallen off, but you can never count them out. I mean, they have been doing it this year. So I understand what you're saying, but when it comes to top 10, top 15 teams, mm -hmm. the big 10 has had more teams in that segment of the rankings all season long. So if you're talking about middle of the road teams and I heard you say Northwestern, Nebraska, et cetera, man, that Nebraska team, you better be ready to play when you sure. play that squad. I've seen them live, you know, covered them a couple of times. They're solid inside, outside. They just have to be able to um, not have as many offensive droughts as they've had as of late, but boy, when they are clicking, they are tough to yes. stop. Um, but I'm just thinking, I mean, I'm not saying a hard no on SEC yeah. because it's SEC and South Carolina is sitting at the top of it. But when it comes to that middle of the pack of the conference, I don't think that they're stronger than the middle of the pack of the Big Ten because, you know, of all the teams ranked in the top 15 in the Big Ten. I don't see as many SEC teams in that segment of the rankings. No, I, I know. I just like, they do have South Carolina and South Carolina is a machine. I'd pick South, obviously pick South Carolina above anyone <laughs> in the country. They're one of the best teams. Yeah. I mean, I haven't done a ton of numbers here. I'll talk, we'll talk, obviously talk about Leo Boston later, but they're having a historically great season. And I just think like, you know, it's pretty debatable between teams like Iowa and, and Tennessee, actually probably Iowa is probably ahead of Tennessee now, but LSU and Iowa play on a neutral floor. I don't know who I'm necessarily picking in that one. A good game. Right? It's, a and good I, game. it's a good game. If I put Northwestern against, I don't know, let's pick someone here from the SEC. Northwestern against like Ole Miss. That's about the same, the same place in the standings there. Um, okay. Probably going, probably going Ole Miss. Nebraska versus a team like Arkansas. I, I 
think I probably lean a little. I probably lean a little Arkansas. Now I went. You down, love Arkansas, though. You love I, Arkansas. I, I'm not saying I'm not biased. I'm not saying I'm not biased <laughs> with the Hogs, but I probably pick Arkansas. So that that's just like, I think it's um it's an interesting debate. Um, but I definitely think just like the SEC has to get a lot of points for having South Carolina because everyone else in the conference would be better if they didn't have to play South Carolina. And you know, Understood. they're you know South Carolina is killing people. I, I, they are a machine. I want to get out of the way of South Carolina as much as possible. And these SEC teams can't. Um, whereas the Big Ten, I, I, I tell, as I mentioned, those four teams at the top are really great, but none of them are quite the machines. Maybe if Indiana was healthy all season, it changes the dynamic. Um, but I don't okay. think any of them are like machines. Like none of these teams in the, in the, uh, in the Big Ten are, are, are mm-hmm. as unbeatable as um, South Carolina is. And I think it's debatable between the rest. But now I do let let's let's talk about because I think you have a you probably have a bigger problem with me having the Big Twelve ahead of the Big Ten than the SEC if I'm right. Probably yes. <laughs> but do you have, so who's your second? I hear you. Um, I'm going with the Pac-12. Pac-12, Pac-12 also not in my top th- in my top three. Wow, like, okay, and you math. have all the math in front of you. Math, it's the math. I can't. I mean, I hear you and I love it. And please subscribe to the Her Hoop Stats information. <laughs> so I'm not negating that. It's a wonderful thing. But my gut tells me that when you have a team like Stanford, Arizona, like there are teams out there who are getting the job done too and are in the top 10, in the top 15. Mm-hmm. And my God, they had two teams battling it out for the national championship last year. So I can't negate them and I can't take them out of my top three. So right now it's Big Ten, Pac-12 for me. One, two. Okay, here's my problem with the Pac-12 there. <laughs> There's a Stan- problem. Stanford, great. Stanford, excellent. Machine, machine, <laughs> machine type very, very tough. team there. Um, very tough. Oregon, excellent team. If they didn't have injuries, I think they'd easily, you know, Struggle. Be, yeah. they, they'd be in the top. 10, five yeah. teams in the country. And they're still excellent. Yeah. And I would really watch out for them in March. I do not buy Arizona. And I've said this a lot really? this season. So, you have said that. so here, like they had a weird week. They like, they almost lost to, I forget who, then they ended up losing to Washington state who uh, is not particularly good. Um, and they've had this season, they've lost three games where her hoop stats gave them a 75% chance or more of winning. Wow. All three of those losses came against teams ranked 65th or worse in HHS ratings, Arizona state, Nothing. Washington state, and number 113 USC, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. They have, that was not that. They have two wins against teams in the top 40 of HHS rankings against Louisville in the first game of the season in an right. extremely bizarre game that we talked about on this podcast and okay. against number 15, Oregon, who had injury issues, but I'm not discounting that one. That's a, that's, those are two solid ones. Right. Every other team in the top 16 of the AP poll has fewer bad losses, which are 60, which I counted as 65, 65th or worse in HHS ratings and more top 40 wins. I don't buy Arizona. I just don't buy it. I don't buy it. I think, I think the pac 12s uh, flotsam, I don't want to be rude, but you know what I'm saying? Like, just like the, the teams here at the bottom, they've kept Arizona afloat and that respect for your dear Barnes, which is valid and you should give her the benefit of the doubt. And the respect right. for this team that they earned last year in the tournament is completely valid. I just don't buy them this season. That's why I discount the Pac-12. And I said, I didn't really even think about them in the same conversation as the ACC or the Big Ten and the big 12, uh, big 12 and the sec. I just didn't, I didn't put them in that same category because I just don't buy Arizona as, you know, better than the other top three teams in each conference. So if you did buy Arizona, would they be in your top three? So they're the ones keeping the pac 12 out for you. No. I mean, if my aunt had a wheel, she'd be a bicycle, right? I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that. I don't know if that's if that's what's keeping them out. But like, yeah. I sure I just don't. I don't. I don't buy the Pac-12 necessarily. So that, that's my that's my I big problem you. with the Pac-12. Um, I I hear you. 
I hear you. I, and, and, you know, excuse my voice is bad today for a certain reason we'll discuss later. Um, but I think, <laughs> and I'm not saying it's just a coach's rasp. Um, but for, for me, I like what Adia Barnes has shown she can do in mm-hmm. the postseason. Mm-hmm. And so I know it's what have you done for me lately. And I know I said earlier, it's about momentum headed into mm-hmm. postseason and, and conference tournament play but I think she's going to have them ready to go. Sure. So I'm giving her, like you said, the benefit of the doubt and full on respect there, but I've seen what she did last year and I can't turn my eye to that. Like, well, you know, and I know they don't have who they had last year with Ari McDonald. Mm-hmm. I get it. However, I think that they started the season unranked and worked their way into the top 10 for yep. a reason. And the fact that they were able to do that this year without a player like Eric Donald, I think that they understand the assignment ahead of them, which is to be prepared for postseason. And maybe they did hit some speed bumps along the way. And maybe they did lose to teams like um, 116th ranked USC, a total upset there. But I think when they have something dangling in front of them, the incentive is there like, hey, we need to win and stay in. We need to conquer and continue. We're going to compete. And that's what Adia Barnes uh, Copa has has gotten them to do before. Yeah. And I think they're going to do it again. And a team like Oregon, and, you know, we're talking about injuries and everything. I mean, yeah. while they've been decimated uh, with injuries as of late. So that's been frustrating for sure. I'm, you know, that, that's tough because you can't really no. plan. I don't want to say plan for that, but you can't really uh, find an answer for that at this juncture. You can't. You know, there are no free agents out there. Like you can't, can't come pull someone off the waiver wire. You know, you got to just go with what you have. And it's, it's really, truly a challenge in that regard. No, and I, I, I do want to, I should give more credit to like Utah, Colorado, UCLA, Arizona State. Colorado's teams, had a fantastic year. Colorado had a good year and then they're good yeah. teams. I just don't, I, yeah. I don't, I don't quite see them stacking up with a conference. Like the big 12, the big 12 is awesome. I was I like was thinking about like how much Big 12 basketball I've watched. And it is like a staggering amount because these teams are really good. You got Baylor, Iowa State, Texas, Oklahoma, uh-huh. and, yeah. and Kansas State. And I think Kansas State is a little bit below those yeah. other four, but Kansas State obviously has Aoka Lee, who is one yeah. of the best players in the country. And again, we will talk about her momentarily. But, uh, but yeah. I, I just think like you have these four teams at the top are all really good. I don't think I wouldn't pick them to be in the fun. Well, I don't know. I got to see a bracket first. Right. But I, I don't think, I, I think Baylor probably is the team. I would only team I would be confident going to the final four, but I love okay. the, I love what the Texas team has done this year. I love what that Oklahoma team has done this year. Thanks I just so think well. they've really um, been an excellent conference top to bottom. I mean, I, I think he, he, it's been, it's been challenging and all of these teams have scored upsets on one another. So I'm impressed. Yeah. I think Kansas has also had a really nice season. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed by the big 10, the big 12. And I think them not them having four good teams in the conference of what is this? this is, I don't even know how many teams are left in the big 12, nine. It's a big nine. I believe so. Yeah. It's I, I believe so. Yes. Yeah. So in the big nine, four of them, four of the teams are really good. And the fifth one has a player of the year candidate. So I'm I'm big on the Big 12 and they are second in my HHS rating um thingy here. So they have this <laughs> they have this they have the second number. Oh, also I should mention the bracketology here for okay. um the SEC has nine teams in. Uh the SEC has nine teams in because Lord knows we cannot avoid the SEC in any sport. Uh the Big 12 <laughs> has six teams, and oh. I will look up the other ones right now as we speak. Um, and this is all, this is ESPN's stuff. So we'll see what happens, but the mm-hmm. PAC 12 has, has six teams in and the big 10 has six teams in as well. Uh, so that's how it shakes out. And then I have one last conference that is, that has not been mentioned, but who's your third conference? Is, is it one that we've mentioned? It is. And it's it, to me, I, I know you don't like having a tie. <laughs> <laughs> However, there were no rules established for this ranking, so I'm not. going with I, I'm going with SEC and ACC as the tie for my third um, my third choice. Says <laughs> I was going to say my third choice, but it's to them. So 
Um, I'm going with both of them because I, you can't. I mean, Fair. You, uh, throw a coin. And either way, you're right. And it's like for those two conferences. So, uh, you know, with the Big Ten, Pac-12, SEC, ACC, boom, right there. Yep. Those are my three-ish. No, I, I think that's uh, my, my third one is the ACC. Um, they have okay. nine team. They have nine teams in ESPN's bracketology. Uh, they're really strong up top. I mean, I think NC State and Louisville. Mm-hmm. I mean, they could end up getting. Uh, I know Louisville just lost last week. Um, North but Carolina. Yeah, it's North Carolina, which right. is huge for North Carolina. Huge, huge. for North Carolina. But yeah. um, I, I, they're both probably going to be one seeds. I mean, we'll see how it all shakes out. But I don't see. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't see the other teams on the two line jumping up past them so it it looks like we're gonna have two one seeds from the acc maybe that means we should have put them higher (laughs) i don't know but then you look at the you you look at this conference north carolina is really good virginia tech's real good Notre dame's really good georgia tech has been ranked all season duke has fallen off greatly but sure i'm not sure i have no idea what happened and and there's a good article by m adler on that but duke is duke has fallen off but they're still good and i love boston college um, yeah. I really like that team. I like, I love Taylor Schwartz, uh, four state is good. And then my Miami hurricanes have gotten, have snuck into the tournament, according to ESPN <laughs> in the last four in baby. So, right? <laughs> Hey, go Canes and go ACC. And I, it's, it's a really, really good conference. That's going to need the, uh, interesting tournament to get all these teams in. Yeah. Yeah. But I think yeah. the it's, it's strong. It's a strong conference. So I think putting them third is fair. Um, even though they do have two one seats, which probably no other conference is even going to sniff. Right. And did we mention Notre Dame? I mean, I, I briefly mentioned Notre Dame, but yes, they did. You throw them in there. Okay. I, I, you know, they're, they're super tough too. And on any given night, we'll take you out. Um, same with Virginia tech, like you said. And I just think that, you know, top to bottom, you're talking about earlier, we were talking about the middle of the pack teams. Mm-hmm. They're very, very solid in the middle. And we know what they look like up top, like you said, but the middle is very, very solid. The same with the SEC, like it's the same point. So that's why to me, it's a toss up uh, between the two conferences. And I just think that tournament in Greensboro this year, oh my gosh, it's going to be the same energy in Indianapolis, right? In terms of, wow, who's going to win today? You just don't know. Like you could go in years ago and kind of figure out all right this is how it's going to pan out the teams with the buys they're rested they're going to go all the way through to the end we cannot say that this year yep. for acc sec maybe sec you can maybe maybe a little easier yes um a little more easy but with with the big 10 and the acc i mean that's that's a toss up right now depending upon number one who's healthy 100 percent healthy and number two who's consistent Mm -hmm. with their momentum we've seen strong momentum from every single team that has been ranked in those two respective conferences we've seen them at their best but we've also seen all of them at their worst yep so which team is going to show up in this postseason race to the ncaa seedings and i think for the article that was um on ESPN W about the big 10 holding all the cards yep. when it comes down to the seeding for the tournament. That's why I put them first uh, just because of how intriguing the tournament play will be and yep. not just for the teams in the big 10, like it's intriguing for all the other conferences. So that's why I put them first because of what this tournament means for the landscape of the NCAA tournament. No, I'm excited for the bubble too. I mean, and looking at the uh, at the bubble as it is, I think the ACC, uh, in terms of who's actually getting in, they yes. hold a lot of the cards because you got Miami, right. Boston College, Duke, Florida State, lots of teams on the bubble there. And I think Big mm-hmm. Ten. I mean, every every conference is going to have teams in the bubble that need to get a big win, uh, and really all you need is one. Right? It's like it, it's right. almost luck of the draw because if Northwestern, for example, ends up playing, I don't know, Indiana in the second round and gets a win, they they may be in the tournament. And you just don't know. You just don't right. know how, how that's going to work out in terms of who's your opponent going to be. So I'm stoked for the tournament. I'm glad we disagreed at literally every turn in this little game. Like we have, we did. do not have the same list at all. So I'm glad we got to touch on all of the big conferences. And if you're a small conference person, 
we're sorry, but you know, there's only so much bandwidth we have around here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, shouts to BYU. BYU is awesome. I was looking more into them. Shouts to BYU. Um, but I, I, you know, it, it's going to be a really, really fun conference tournament. Um, then we now let's get to our more normal awards, you know, right. your players of the year, your all Americans, your coach of the year. Um, I think there was, there's been debate on the player of the year. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why, because I've come on here multiple times. I think the first week of the season, I said Aaliyah Boston's going to win. Aaliyah Boston's going to win the the uh, Player of the Year, um, and I've been proven correct. She's having an amazing season. But you know, is that is that your Player of the Year as well? It is, okay. and I mean, how can you negate a player like that on the number one team in the country with only one loss at this juncture and um, defeating? what, 11 ranked teams mm-hmm. this year? I mean, there are some fantastic players across the board in the country. Yes. But I think when you're looking at it scientifically or with your heart and soul, I, I think it's very clear that it's Aaliyah Boston there. And I just think if you're in first place, that should be a given. I mean, that should be every level every yeah. gender every you know i always say that anyway but uh i i just think that should be the key it, i think it's it's a tiebreaker among players who are equally as good um if you have players that are like in the same category same tier you're gonna use the yeah. way the team has played as a tiebreaker naturally i don't think that's the case this year to be completely no. frank, I don't think there's a player that's been close to as good as Aaliyah Boston. You know, her team's been awesome, but it, it, they are so much better when um, when she's when she's on the court. And uh, you know, there's a crazy stat that Alexa Philippou of ESPN. Congrats on getting to ESPN. I know. I just saw her. Oh yeah. Congrats. Yeah, yeah. she was at the at the UConn, oh, UConn. Um, Marquette game. Right, right. Uh, no, Alexa's great. Congratulations on getting to ESPN. They deserve mm-hmm. each other, and we deserve her there. But she had a she had an excellent stat. Part of the reason why she should be there is because she pulls <laughs> stats like these. So according to Pivot Analysis, the Gamecocks' net rating when Boston is on the floor is forty three point oh four. Wow, that's wow. that's uh, that's good, folks. That means they're outscoring <laughs> the other team by forty three points per one hundred possessions when Aaliyah Boston's on the floor. Oh. That number drops by literally 40 points when she sits down to 3.41. So they go from machine Terminator <laughs> level team of one of the greatest teams of all time to like medi not mediocre, but just like slightly above average in that ball level. <laughs> like they're a f- they're fine. They're fine. They're solid right. middle of the road team, but they're not that good when she sits. You look at right. her player efficiency rating, 45.3. That's an insane number. Insane that is. number. I'm going to give you the list of players who have done it because this is a really impressive list, as you can imagine. We need that. We need Elena, it. Elena Deladon did it three times. Wow. Brittany, yeah, right. Brittany Griner did it twice. Asia wow. Wilson did it. Brianna Stewart did it. Megan wow. Gustafson did it. Chenea Gumake did it. Brianna Jones, Alicia Clark, who wow. was an animal at Middle Tennessee State. Complete. Complete. Kelsey Griffin, who I don't remember from Nebraska. I remember Nebraska. Nebraska 09. A flat out killer. Well, a flat out killer. She's on this list of players who have had uh, player efficiency ratings of over 45. And then Aoka Lee this year, who again, we'll talk about in just a second. But of all yeah. of those players that I just mentioned, all those great players, she has the second best defensive win shares per 40 minutes. And the best player defensive rating among this group behind Stewie in 2015-16. So I mean, I just I, I don't know. I don't know what more you want me to say. She's on this list of players, and she's pretty much better than all of them uh, at this point in terms of her defense. And what I love most about her mm-hmm. is that she went from an awesome player, player of the year candidate last year, right? Right. Completely redid her body, changed her game did the yeah. things that the team needed her to do to win because they fell short in that final four game yes. against Stanford. And that stuck with her and she oh, yeah. back and, be, and went from great to legendarily unstoppable. Yeah. 
Like she three yeah. point three point one more points per game in three fewer minutes this year. Effective mm. field goal percentage went up by five percent from last year. And again, she was already a player of the year candidate last year. So I don't see an argument against her. I, I can't. I can't fathom what mm -hmm. the argument is against mm -hmm. her because she has put in the work from last year to this year to become this unbelievably unstoppable player. I, I think she deserves uh, the player of the year running away. Unanimous. I, I don't know if that happens, but unanimously. No, absolutely. And the thing I, I love about her work ethic mm -hmm. is not only has she worked on her body and gotten in better condition, but she worked out with Tim Duncan. Yeah. Like she yeah. had workouts yeah. with him. What was it? Two weeks. Mm -hmm. I went down to his house and had just daily workouts in terms of footwork, fundamentally sound post moves and, and all of that. Not like she needed it, yeah. but I mean, everyone needs refinement. So I guess I, I retract that last statement, but I mean, she was already, like you no. said, a stellar post player, but then now, you know, her ability to stretch the floor this season on a consistent basis and her ability to measure up against double and triple teams. I mean, that's just going to help her for the next level. Well, I think what you said was super important. She didn't need to do it. And a lot of players wouldn't. A lot of players, I mean, she's, she, she's like 20, maybe. She's 20. Like, yeah. you know, a lot of players just sit there and say, hey, like, you know, I, I'm good. Like, I'm really good. Right. I'll be, she, like, she was oh, wow. already the number one pick in the WNBA draft coming into oh, yeah. this year when she comes out. She was already going to be this, you know, a player of the year candidate. And she said, I'm going to do all of the work. And I don't know. I mean, Extra. you know, you're. You're, you're mm -hmm. around, you're around the, the young players more. I don't think there's many, many players who no. ever across the nation that would say that sit there and do that, you know? No, no, it's, it's exactly right. I mean, she has an old school mentality when it comes to that level of work ethic that's necessary to mm -hmm. continue to evolve your game. Like you said, you don't want to settle. Like I'm getting by and dominating with what I'm doing now, mm -hmm. but boy, what if I did extra, right? What if I got some extra reps in? What if I shot a hundred more shots? from three before I leave the gym today. What if? So that's what great competitors are made of. That kind of self-discipline, that kind of self-challenge. No one had to tell her, hey, you need to go and do this. She's like, I need more. I mm -hmm. want more for myself. I want to be dominant. And I want a long professional career. People are going to know what I can do and try to take that away. I need to have a counter for the counter for the counter. And that's what she's working on right now. And no one can stop her because she has like five counters for yeah. her initial actions when she catches the ball on the block in particular. So for me, I'm just impressed with that, that level of dedication to her craft. And I think when you have the WNBA GMs looking at that, that's going to really make a difference too in the WNBA draft when they're choosing players, because it's not just about your stats. When it gets to that level, it's about who you are, what your mm -hmm. motor is like. Do we have to tell you to go work with Tim Duncan or are you going to go on your own? She's going yeah. to go on her own, man. And that's what I love. Like that's that kid, you know, uh, and no one has to ask her, or beg her to, to do what she has a passion for. And, and that's the beauty of her game. No, no, it's it's extremely impressive. Shouts to her. I mean, I I think what she's done this year has been one of the most impressive things of basketball um, yeah. this season. Because like, I don't know. I'm I'm really. It's just like she she saw it last year, and you see it so many times. Where players are like dejected after a moment, and then that doesn't quite stick. And then you come back the next year, and you're like, well, why is this? Why does the same thing keep happening? It's like she said, no, uh, that ain't happened to me. We may lose <laughs> in some other way, but that the way we lost last year, I ain't missing my free throws. Like I'm, you know, she's. I'm really, really, just really, really impressed by her work ethic and who she is um, yeah. as a player and as a person. I do want to give you two more candidates for player of the year. Okay. Um, the one who like started, I, there was a, I don't know who people were debating with online because I don't remember anyone's ever saying that Caitlin Clark should be a player of the year. Um, I love Caitlin Clark and she does, I think she would be second on my list, but I, she is a step behind Boston, but man, I mean, just like, yeah forget numbers i mean she leads so she does lead the nation in points per game and assists per game but she leads the nation in like how right like she leads the nation <laughs> in what did she just do and like exactly. i need to get to a television right now because caitlin clark is going off exactly so that's what she leads the nation in and uh, i i think she's a phenomenal player the numbers 
bear that out, although her three-point shooting percentage has plummeted this year. But she has been awesome and electric. And I think she's uh it's it's more of a, a she has a Steph Curry vibe, right? Yes. So I think she she deserves a credit in this conversation, um, despite being just a little bit behind Aaliyah Boston. Yeah, I agree. I mean, she's definitely right there for me as well. And I think for me, Caitlin Clark has the wow factor. Yes. Um, she's drawn in NBA players like Kevin Durant as, as being a huge fan uh, of hers. And he's marveling at the fact that she's doing what she's doing and how she's doing it. I, I just think that there's a, a level of respect there. And for all the naysayers for women's basketball, you know, I'm going with the, the ones who actually mm-hmm. play at a high level. Uh, so for me, Caitlin Clark, only a sophomore. I mean, she led the country in scoring as a freshman as well. So this isn't like she just popped on the scene. Mm-hmm. She's been doing this, right? And you know this about her. And what I was just saying about Aaliyah Boston in terms of when you know what players are doing, you're going to be at the top of the scout defensively, right? We're going to do yeah. this to disrupt her. We're going to do that to disrupt her. And that's why these two are the top two picks for our player of the year this year, because even with that being factored in, all those aspects, all those different defensive schemes that are made up for them, Mm -hmm. they're still able to dominate. And that's work. That's work ethic. That's uh, Lisa Bluter for Iowa, the head coach there, saying that, you know, she's gotten better on the defensive glass. So then now she can initiate the offense and push the tempo the other way and pull from the logo and drive us all crazy in a great way. Um, But I think, you know, she's added to her game as well because defenses have, have really taken away those clean looks that she got last year. She's not getting those. So she's found other ways to score at the rim. Excuse me. She's gotten to the foul line. And again, she's pushed tempo and gotten a lot more, of her offense, uh, getting downhill, getting over half court and pulling and knocking him in. So like you said, a little bit of Steph Curry with her in that, but Steph Curry didn't just walk onto the, the game court and start pulling from half court. No. These guys work their oh butts God. off. We don't see the underbelly of that. Uh, you know, we have players that like Diana Taurasi, same deal. Yeah. All of them are cut from the same cloth when it comes to confidence, when it comes to putting that work in and then letting it show in the game. And then we marvel at it because we don't know how they're able to continuously do that in a high, efficient manner. And it, it's just amazing to watch. And just to know that she's she's only in her second season on the collegiate level. It, what is she going to do next year? I mean, I know we still have time this season. And I'm yeah. not jumping the gun. However, I can't help but side eye the fact that she's going to be a junior next year. And every season since she's been at Iowa, she's led the country in scoring. What else can she do? I mean, uh, what else can she do? She well, she'll lead the country in scoring next year. I can, <laughs> yes. I can guarantee you that. Um, I mean, and, 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 you know, her season, I think her three point shooting numbers look a lot different. Um, if she, you know, didn't if she had McKenna Warnock all season. Um, I think that was yeah, huge. That was, that, was huge. that was huge just from the spacing. I, I don't have the synergy numbers in front of me now. I'd imagine a lot of those shots um, come late in the shot clock because she she does, yeah. you know, a lot of times the, the Iowa offense will stall and she just gets the ball at the end. She makes magic happen fairly mm-hmm. often, but, you know, right. it's, not, it's, not the, it's not the uh, easiest situation to be in. And like you're saying, um, I mean, I say this lovingly. <laughs> Tarasi, Curry, Clark, they're all psychos. Like those are the people that are literally are sitting there practicing threes from the logo. You know, they make up, you know, a hundred of them every yeah. day. It's like, you know, I went to the gym today. I did my little, I did a little vitamin drill, you know, just shooting from right mm-hmm. in front of the net, you know, backing up, you know, just get some shots up. Um, my yeah. shoulder's killing me. So I don't know <laughs> how these, how these youngins do. That is just practice. That's just practice, folks. <laughs> Um, yeah, you got to stretch out first. Gabe can't just walk in there and start shooting. I do. I kind of. <laughs> I know. Actually, I never stretch my shoulders or something. Yeah, stretch out. All right. I, the last part I want to mention the player of the year conversation is Aoka right. Lee. Um, I, I mean, I don't know how, how deep I have to get into this because, you know, she has games of 44, 61, 61. 
Um, yeah. Let me see the Harlow ones. 61, 43, 38, 38. 33, 32, 31, 30. Those are 30 point games. And the rest are Dang. really good. Uh, she also, as I've mentioned, every time we bring up Ayoka Lee on this podcast, she's essentially dragging one foot behind her the Literally. entire season. She has a, a Mondo like brace on her leg and yes. she is dragging that thing down the court and still putting up buckets. She's been absolutely massive for her team on both ends. Uh, and I think she deserves a ton of credit uh, for, for yeah. this team being where they are uh, in terms of, of potentially have a chance of making a tournament and mm-hmm. just for, you know, being reminding everyone that, Hey, the bigs, the big ain't dead in the women's game for sure. <laughs> we're, that we're still here. The, the old school big is hey. not, is not that I think Aoka um, really <laughs> showed that this year. So she definitely deserves my third place vote here. Yeah. I, I, I like that. I, I know that, She's been solid and, and another player who you can game plan all you want to, mm-hmm. and she's going to continue to get hers. And, you know, just the one factor that they've been in and out right down there at 23, yeah. 24, yeah. 25. I hear you. And I love her game, but I think you have to mention, and I, this probably sounds big 10 heavy. No, no, and no. I know no. I said big 10 for, you know, my conference and all that. But there are reasons, and it's not, you know, because of that. But you have to look at Nas Hillman as well. Uh, that's and the other person I looked at. Just have to look at her numbers, and you just have to look at her sustainability mm-hmm. as a, a smaller post player, right? right? She's not 6'5", she's 6'1", six 6'2", six maybe, if she's got on some good insoles in there. She's not that tall, no. but it didn't matter for her. She's like... Um, Alyssa Thomas in that way you know you talk about size and ability to finish inside over bigger stronger players it's because of her footwork and her speed and her work ethic as well so I think you have to factor in a player like Nas Hillman when you're talking about player of the year and Michigan having a blockbuster season this year I mean they beat Maryland twice this year they kind of came out of nowhere, if you will, when you talk about coming into this season, mm-hmm. Indiana was the team who went furthest in the NCAA tournament last year, going to the elite eight. And then you had Michigan, Iowa, Maryland going to the sweet 16, right? So Michigan was not really mentioned as a team to beat in the big 10 this year. It was Indiana and Maryland, right? Well, which one, which one are you going to pick boom or boom? And then now Michigan has, has jumped both of them. Oh, and it's I, because of, it's because of Nas Hillman and they don't have Leah Brown, mm-hmm. you know, she's been injured. So she's been in and out. So, you know, as of the last couple of weeks with her ankle. So, I mean, even with Brown being out, she's been able to do what she's supposed to do on the floor, which is dominate on both sides and be a double, double machine for the Wolverines. No. And I, I think that's totally fair. I, it, I was debating between uh, Hillman and Lee just because you know she, they're they're such good players, both of them. Um, they're yeah. so, they're just really tremendous basketball players, and I, I have a couple other players on this list. I, we can get to all Americans now too, if you'd like. Sure. But uh, I just think I went with I went with Lee just because I think she just she just kind of dominated the year a little bit more, right? Um, in, in that perspective of, of getting the headlines and being sort of she's there, she's Kansas State's team. No yes. disrespect to everyone else. But they, you know, their bread is buttered mainly with Aoka Lee. And I think Michigan can do it in a bunch of different ways because of the versatility of Nas Holman. She's a great passer. She's a great screener. Right. She's a great connector. So I think just because of that, I, I kind of put a little bit more into what Aoka Lee did. But I do want to talk about All-Americans because I said all those things about Nas Holman. And now I'm looking at my list. I don't have Nas Holman in my All-American list. Oh, Dave, now, come on. Five. Now, is that mathematical? No. The, this, okay. was just, this was just me doing... I've been like, I've been doing a lot of draft stuff too. So I'm sorry if this okay. like clouds my view. Um, my, my mock draft will come out next week. So I have, I have my top three in the player of the year, obviously. So Boston Clark Lee. Um, okay. And maybe it's just cause I also want this, the other conferences recognize I put Melissa Smith and Haley Jones just above <sighs> Nas. I swear I had Nas Holman like on that. I had Nas Holman on that line, but I was like, you know, I really, okay. I think Stanford deserves um, yeah. a player on here. I think Haley Jones has been incredible. Love Haley uh, Jones. Did you see her butt shot the other day? No, I did not. 
So she- I was in New York running around like a cuckoo. What, what happened? So against Oregon, uh, Stanford's losing. I forget how much they were losing by, but she scores seven points in the last two minutes of the game. And the final shot of this is she uh, gets, gets a high post possession, I believe. She cuts right. across the lane. And I don't know. I don't know what happened, but she gets like knocked down and fouled. Mm-hmm. And as she's falling down, she's like squatting on her butt just about just before she hits the floor. She's squatting and her butt's about to touch the floor. And she just tosses up and goes in. And it was the, it was the uh, shot that gave Stanford the lead. I'll, sh- I'll send it to you. It's Please inc- send it to me. I need that. One of the most incredible plays I've ever seen. <laughs> Um, and honestly, if, I think that may have just like completely changed my view on all America. Cause I was like, I have to put Haley Jones in here. Cause she had one of the best <laughs> shots I've ever seen. And, and just was, she's such a, a great, um, you know, leader of that team. I, I think they do yeah. everything through her. And I think, you know, they've struggled at point guard Anna Wilson. It, she's not, that's just not her role necessarily yeah. in being that distributor that, um, that they had last year. So I think Haley Jones has had to step up and do that and take the scoring load and take the defensive load. And she's taken that all in stride. And she's, she's another player who's gotten so much better from her yeah. excellent season last year that I think right. she deserves, she deserves a spot here. And Melissa Smith, just to me, I mean, you know, you, you just her. look right. You just look at her and you're like, damn, she's a hooper. Like, yeah. <laughs> she's like, flat tough. yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to play against her, you know, like, I, so I, I think Melissa has really carried that Baylor team. Jeez. Um, and that's, that's why I have them both ahead of Nas Holman. But you know, if you want to put Nas there, I'm not going to be mad. Yeah. I got to put Nas up there just because, you know, without her, Michigan's not where they are. Right. And not to say that she is all they have, because clearly that is not the case. So, I mean, you can, I know you said that about Lee, right. Yeah. But I don't think it's the same reasoning with Nas Hillman and yeah. what she oh, means for Michigan and it's not just her because we saw that in the Baylor game when they played to overtime yeah. with Melissa Smith and company. Okay. And Nas Hillman fouled out with like 40 seconds left or something in regulation and the team still managed to win that game. So it's not all her, um, but she is a key component clearly to their success this season, which has been really impressive to watch uh, unfold as the year has gone on. So for me, uh, I need to see that, that Haley Jones shot <laughs> because as you, as you described it, Gabe, my, both my hamstrings tightened up because there's no way oh. that I'd be that low <laughs> and have the ability to make a shot. So um, that's a good challenge. That should be another one of those challenge shots that the coaches no. do. Like, no, no, no okay. Your knee, I saw that. I was like, my Not knees would coach. explode. <laughs> Not I was like, coach. my knee. I mean, <laughs> if I if I even thought about doing that, I would hear something from my knee. Just be like, no, yeah. creak. Like, no, sir. Yeah, yeah. I'm so not, uh, I'm good on trying that. Not not good. Yeah. So that that could be for the other coaches to do, and other podcasters. But for for me, I love Melissa Smith as well, and I, I'm going with Jones and Smith too with with that grouping. And I agree. Okay. So you took you took those. Lee out. For Hillman. I took Lee out. That's fine. And I'm putting Hillman in because while she is the focal point for Michigan, she's not their be all end all. Yep. And she can be the focal point and still play a team game. So that to me supersedes sure. 61 points, which is very impressive. I mean, I scored 50 last year, so it's not like no, you know, no, she's not. not capable of doing something like that. Um, but I, I just, I just like, I don't know. I'm old school when it comes to team play. I yeah. hate selfish, but and not that anybody yet. They don't even come after me about me saying something about Lee's team is selfish. They're not, no. or she's selfish. I'm not saying that. I am saying that I love the beauty of the game when you can have a standout player, but also have the beauty of team basketball occur. So I think with those five players, we've seen that. And their dominance has been sustained this season in particular. I mean, you're talking about Caitlin Clark sustained for two seasons as a, as a puppy. And, <laughs> and I love it. I, I think it's, I think it's impressive. So, I mean, the fact that she's leading the country in scoring and assists, like to me, that, that carries more That's... weight than 
having a hundred points in a game or something like that, which is fantastically impressive. But I love the team game. I love the flow of it. I love, you know, finding your teammates, but if I can't find you, I can get my own. I love that. And I think that's why these five players for me are, are the ones that, that make my top five. No, I think it's fair. And look, Hey, there's, there's a ton of players here that, you know, I'm sure someone uh, <laughs> smarter than I could come here and, you know, convince me otherwise. <laughs> Um, you know, cause I do, I do, I think, I think Hillman it is deserving of a first team all American spot. And, yeah. you know, we, we're not going to go through all of the all Americans cause we don't have that much time on this podcast, but I think it is a, it's a really, really interesting year for this, but you know, yeah. Boston Clark, and I think probably Jones are the ones that I'm really, really locked in on everyone else. Mm-hmm. I can, I can go either way on, but I'd probably say because I think Stan. I just think Stanford deserves it. Although the the thing with Stanford is like maybe Cameron Brink deserves it because Cameron Brink has also been unbelievable. And if you I was look at the stats, her. yeah, if yeah. you look at the stats, Cameron Brink's also been awesome. And yeah, it, it, hey, look, I'm not gonna get into all of them. You know, t- shots mm-hmm. of Taylor Robertson of Oklahoma, uh, <laughs> but like she's, she's she's great. But uh, you know, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I that's my five, and that's what I'm sticking to. You want to go to Coach of the Year? I do want to go with Coach of the Year. And I mean, am I going first or who's going me? I mean, I imagine we have the same answer, but yes, go first. (laughs) I imagine we have the same. Uh, Don't steal it. Yeah, no doubt. (laughs) Okay. I mean, I want to back it up. No, we we can back it up. I mean, mean, who else is there to say? Dawn period, Stanley period. Yeah. I mean, I think, look, all right. So uh, here's the, here's Stanley. Stanley. What did I say? No, we, I mean, we know, we know she, she kicked your butt a couple of times. So you, you know, her name. She you know, did. you know her name. You know her name. We don't I have know. Her. John Staley. What did I say? I uh, no, but uh, Staley is. Um, I mean, I think you know. All right, we don't have to make a great case for this. Obviously, she's the 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 head of the uh, the wrecking ball, right? She's in charge of it. Uh, I think when you're the best team, when you're that good too, when you're that good, it's like you can't give it to someone else. But I think the thing that I really love about Dawn is like, there's not a ton of attrition with the South Carolina program. Like most That's of the true. kids stay until they get their chance. Interesting. I was, I was listening to a JJ Reddick podcast and she was talking about one of the things that she does with every player that comes into South Carolina program is that mm-hmm. she sits them down with their parents and explains to them what they need to, wh- why they're playing the minutes they're playing and what they mm-hmm. need to do to get more minutes if that's what they want. And I think that's a big reason as to why South Carolina is able to recruit these excellent players and then keep them in the building. Because right. you know they, they have they have sophomores on the bench who are five star players and that aren't right. really playing all that much, and they have freshmen too who come in and these freshmen want to get out the gate and you know they're not playing that much. So right. I think Dawn, that is a huge thing in her in her uh, cap there. Obviously the wins, obviously how good this team has gotten, how much better this team has gotten. But I think mm-hmm. just being able to communicate with players and and being able to treat them like adults, I think she's the model for how coaches are going to have to be in the future. And, and she has done, she has set that example really greatly. Um, so that's, that's what I got on Don. Do you want, do you want anything on our fellow podcaster, Don Staley? I know I was about to say <laughs> she has a podcast that's rolling right now and I love it. And I think for, for me and, and to see Dawn doing what she's doing, not only as a, a mentor and a fantastic mm-hmm. tactician of the game and coach, I think that, you know, she's really, shine such a bright light on the women's game oh, yeah. and brought so much respect there in the South Carolina community. And I just think it's so beautiful to see a packed arena when they play. And the fact that she calls the fans fams, mm-hmm. like that's family. And I think the way you just said how she went into the homes of these families, no. right and and laid out the expectations and and that's what kids want they want expectations they don't just want to come in and do it their way even though it may seem like that they don't they want the discipline they want to be pushed they want the challenge of that if they're any kind of competitor they don't want to come in and play patty cake all day uh, you know they want to come in and work and they want to come in and be challenged they want to come in and be better for their experience that day and dawn affords them that opportunity and I think you have to credit her for what she's been able to do not only with her team at South Carolina but with the Olympic team last year and how much pressure that was for her to succeed and she said as much it's not me just saying that she said that and for her to 
have that pressure, feel it, not run from it, lean into it and get another gold medal, seven gold medals for women's basketball. And she was a part of a ton of them as yeah. a player too. So, I mean, for her to understand that assignment and then go to South Carolina and sit at number one all season, even after losing to Mizzou on that one second buzzer yeah. beater, uh, you know, but everyone's like, okay, they're still number one. I'm like, what? You know, like that's just that's easy the, the respect. Yeah. Right. But that's just the respect that she carries. And the fact that she can TikTok with the team. I love that too. So that's good. She's, she's looked really cute doing that. She's, she's the model. <laughs> I think, good. I think if you're going to be successful as a coach, not only in the women's game, but just like in college basketball, yeah. you, you better be paying attention to what Don Staley's doing. Cause I think she runs yeah. a great program that everyone can learn from. Uh, I do want to yeah. bring up a couple more names. Uh, sure. Westmore NC state. You know, they okay. finally get over the hump. They win the ACC regular season tournament. I mean, regular season uh, championship. Yeah. Uh, Vic Schaefer at Texas. I really, really, really like what he's uh, been able to do uh-huh. there in his second year. They're they're a team that I'd watch out for in March. Yeah, Kim Barnes uh-huh. Rico deserves a ton of credit at Michigan. Um, yep. I shudder to say this, but like Gino REM, <laughs> he did a pretty good job this year. I mean, it, it, usually his teams, and I get it, they're still all five stars. So even, but they had a ton of injuries and they have to go through it, and they're still seventh in the country. You know, so I think they, he, right. suck, he deserves just a little bit of credit. Um, yeah. And I don't know. I mean, like, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot. Of, I mean, Nikki Collin has a, does a decent claim to this, I but I, I think they all shuffle in behind Don Staley. So did, were there any coaches I didn't mention that you want to just give a shout out to? And no, I mean, all of those for sure. But I mean, I like, you know, Nikki Collin and what she's been able to do, mm-hmm. um, especially taking over such a storied program there at Baylor and, and the pressures that come with that. And she's kind of, like I said, with Dawn leaned right into it and, and done really well, but I like Kim Barnes, Rico mentioned mm-hmm. there because this has been, you know, a blockbuster season for Michigan uh, in terms of sitting in that top 10 all year long and moving up to as high as number four, I believe. Yep. Um, in one of the polls. So, I mean, that's a high level of respect for what she's been able to do as well. Um, but when you're talking about Gino, I think, you know, he definitely has to be mentioned. I'm just going to co-sign that as well. And it's, and it's more about their defense than it has been their yeah. offense. Right. I mean, yeah. they had the seventh best defense in terms of their efficiency uh, just a couple of weeks ago. So we have that as your foundation you're going to make and miss shots. You're going to have, wow, they had like almost their entire starting lineup out with injury at, at one point. And they have just had, you know, probably I think it was nine different starting lineups this year uh, before the Marquette game last year. I mean, mm-hmm. last week. So I think when when you have the continuity of, of every player returning without graduating anybody from last year, but then coming this year and having everybody back, but then hitting these, these injuries like this, 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 one thing that UConn has been consistent with has been their defensive effort. And they have had droughts in games. And we saw that happen when they lost to Villanova. They just had a drought of uh, lack of offensive production. But, uh, you know, and, and Villanova hit shots in that game. But they can miss shots, but they get the stops. Yeah. And I think you have to credit um, the expectations on that side of the court from Gina Oriema. I was just laughing because I was watching a uh, one of the coaching tapes that Gino has on YouTube. And it's just him yelling at like various players that do not play for him, like the the promo oh. players for the in the camps that he just oh, like yeah. he just tells yes. them like that was terrible. That was, you're all <laughs> that was awful. What kind of effort was that? Um, I just, I'll let you know. He he is not afraid to let you know. No. Um, but yeah, I think I, I do think he deserves just a little a little bit of credit here. I know, yes. I know, guys, it's UConn. I, we'll stop talking about them now. Moment <laughs> of the year, our last, our last little Man. award. Uh, and we mentioned it a couple times, but mine uh is definitely Lauren Hansen's game winner against oh, yeah. South Carolina for Missouri. Uh yeah, I that was one of the craziest upsets I think we're ever gonna see in it was tough like basketball full stop, like ever. I know because I, I, Missouri had what seven players. I think they only played seven players in that game because they of did. COVID because of injuries and went up toe to toe against a mostly healthy South Carolina team, the machine that we've been talking about, you know, and beat them. And they yeah. did it on this wonderful final shot 
by Lauren Hansen and, and, you know, Hey, Mizzou's a pretty decent team. They uh, caught lightning in the bottle there right before <laughs> new year's uh, to, to yeah. beat that South Carolina team. So that, that was the moment of the year for yeah. me. Shouts to Mizzou for giving us that awesome moment um, that we were able to clip and put on Instagram reels. And that got us a lot of views. <laughs> so I appreciate them. Yeah, no, I love that. Um, but mine's a little less, um, Zazazu, as I like to say, it's a little less exciting and a little less confetti. Uh, mine is the fact that that we got another year of UConn and Tennessee yeah. playing against each other. I don't know. It was it was very historic in terms of the the longevity of that rivalry. And regardless of how teams are doing, you know, whatever their record is going into that game, it's always fun to watch and. I just, I love when the fans of women's basketball can get together like mm-hmm. that and, and watch a game like that and have just all of the reverberations go through because of all the seeds that Pat Summit and Gina Ariema have planted. And obviously with Kelly Harper playing for Pat and then playing against Gino when Gino was coaching and just all those storylines to me, I guess I'm a little nostalgic when it comes to things like that and the journey of the game and, and all of that. So it's not a buzzer beater for me. It's kind of that moment right there that yep. everyone kind of came together on that day to celebrate the women's game, regardless of the score of the game, regardless of whether it was a blowout or whatever, but just the fact that women's basketball came together to unite and fellowship and, and have that sisterhood and, and the, I don't know, the, the branches of the game of women's basketball far reaching and um, I guess gave everybody a, a smile and, and something to, to remember, especially about Pet Summit that day. Yeah, no, I know it was great. It was a truly special, uh, special moment there. So I think, uh, I think that's, that's all I want. I, I do want to shout, hold on. I do want to shout out the Haley Jones butt shot as one of my moments <laughs> of the year. To, to okay. And Rory, yes, Har- Rory Harmon, uh, breaking i think it was lexi hall i think she broke lexi hall's ankles in that stanford yeah. texas game and i was like yeah. yeah that's when i said this kid's gonna be something special and she has been um so those are my other two that I have there for a moment of the year but it's been just a great year of basketball and it's like we haven't even, it, really it, it feels like we haven't even started yet right because the the tournament is really where we get going uh, yeah but yeah. i don't know i really this was my first year of like really really um in-depth covering the college side i kind of kind of pushed it off a little bit last year and, and do it as deeply and now this year i went two feet deep and i, I was just very very happy with uh with the product that we got and i think everyone that we mentioned on this podcast did a, did an amazing job to make the season so special so far Absolutely. so far so far 10 toes down i love that i love that 10 toes down but listen i think after the conference tournaments we need to revisit not just all of these awards, but sure. I think we need to revisit our most favorite, right? Yeah. Because I think there's going to be so many. Um, I think there's going to sure. be so many buzzer beatery, uh, big time steal, big time block. Mm-hmm. Something's going to happen in these conference tournaments that's going to blow our minds. So right now we have these, you know, couple things. But I think once the conference tournaments are played, I think we're going to have a handful of other opportunities to to cheer for for the game right oh. just in general i think we're gonna have some more stuff it's gonna be crazy yeah. and i'm getting bojangles <laughs> next week so <laughs> everything's coming up gabe uh <laughs> he's still uh, coming up gabe <laughs> uh i i, I the, we have yeah. to do we have we do have to revisit after conference tournaments maybe we, we should do this stuff on live remember last year we did the live we did and we, we haven't have done that do- this year maybe maybe we'll, we'll get back it. to it we'll get the gang we'll get the gang back together to do some live Thanks. stuff during the <laughs> tournament um because it's it. gonna be great hopefully this is selfish i hope okay. maryland does really well in the big tw- big 10 tournament so okay. that we get a regional in college park that we can go oh, we can attend so if they're top four to c that yeah. I, th- I mean they've, they're seeming like a top four c they just don't they can't blow it maryland yeah not because you went there and not oh, because we're, you know, we, we don't care. I don't care how Maryland does. I just want the games to be here so I can, I can be here. Um, go. They have, Oh, yeah. I forgot about the Indiana game. 
that's in a couple oh, yeah. days. So that'll be big. So I got to win that Indiana game, win a couple games in the in the tournament, and then we'll we'll yeah. be uh, watching a lot of basketball. We'll see. Oh, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. But I guess I guess that's it for today because they cut the lights out on us and gave God bless America. Listen. They cut the lights out. We don't have to go home, but we got to deuce out out of here and, and leave. <laughs> I said deuce out. I've been around teenagers too long. Anyway, uh, but that that was a great episode, as always, as we chopped it up. And if you guys have your own ideas about awards, let us know about it in the comments. Oh. Let us know. We love to have uh, dialogue and conversations with you guys, and we appreciate you guys listening. I know one time I, I text Tisha Pranchero, and she said, I'm listening to your podcast right now. <laughs> What? Oh my God. Anyway, so people are listening. So we appreciate you listening. Oh. And and uh, I'm kidding, teacher. If you're listening, going. I was kidding the entire time. <laughs> okay. She wasn't okay, kidding. Okay. I, thought was, I was like, what? And the what? What? So, but anywho, um, we're going to go ahead and wrap this thing up, but we're going to head to these conference tournaments and bring you all things right here on the Her Hoop Stats Podcast Network. For Gabe Ibrahim, I'm Christy Winter Scott. And we'll see you next time on Courtside with Christy and Gabe.